This video is brought to you by Squarespace. A lot of people dislike vegetables. I feel like a lot of us grew up perceiving vegetables as just like a healthy side dish to maybe like a delicious piece of meat or something. Well, I personally believe most of vegetable hate comes from just us not cooking and presenting them properly. But today, that's gonna change forever. What I did was ask you guys what your least favorite vegetables are and I compiled them in the top five most hated vegetables according to you. And we're gonna go through each and every one of them and I'm gonna try to improve them and uh, change your mind about them. Why does it feel like this video is sponsored by vegetables? At number five, we have green beans. Someone said this, green beans, they're gritty and bland? Well, Let's try to make them not that. Now there are a few basic principles I used to mess up when cooking vegetables and I think a lot of people still do, but I think what you want to keep in mind at a basic level is salt and fat. For these green beans, I'm blanching them in generously salted water just to make them a bit softer and for the salt to more deeply season the green bean. But we won't stop here, we need that fat. So I'm gonna heat up some olive oil in a pretty hot pan here. And now I'll dump in my blanched green beans. And the goal here is to develop some browned or even charred color. Ideally, you don't wanna set off your fire alarm, but if it happens, at least you know you got delicious beans. Oh no. That browning directly equals flavor so don't be afraid of that there's a reason steak crust is so delicious now i'm gonna add a bunch of minced garlic to this because garlic and green beans you know very good this is all happening on slightly lower heat by the way we don't want to burn the garlic and now on low heat i'm also dropping in a little knob of butter it's gonna add a nice glossy creamy finish and also some lemon juice for some bright acidity and finally some chopped parsley for some freshness and now your tired old gritty bland beans just became a garlic Licky, lemony, buttery superstar. I love green beans and especially these green beans. They're soft but not mushy. They have some color on them and they're covered in a delicious buttery garlicky coating. Mm, come on. I could eat like a big bowl of just this and be satisfied as a meal. You try this if you don't like green beans and then call me or don't, don't call me. At number four, we have eggplant. Oh, Kevin, it's actually called aubergine. No, I wanna, let me say eggplant. I know I sound uncultured and dumb. I wanna say eggplant and you should be fine with me saying eggplant. So someone said eggplant, it's mushy and yucky. No, it's not. Eggplant is good. It's a good thing. I'm gonna make this eggplant so good, it will change your life. You will eat this and uncover the deepest mysteries of your life. Okay, maybe not, but it will taste good in your mouth. I crisscross cut this eggplant to make this cool checkered pattern and salted it generously. Make sure the salt gets in every little crevice. I will let this sit for about 10 minutes and then wipe off the excess salt and all the water. And the next step is to fry them up in a shallow layer of oil. We're going for about five minutes per side. I would say we're looking to soften up even more and also get some color look at that beautiful browning but it's not over yet i'm gonna remove them and pat them dry a little bit with a paper towel and i'm moving them to a baking sheet now we're gonna approach this in a bit of a different way aubergine pairs really well with umami flavors that's that kind of soy saucy savory flavor so we're gonna make a miso glaze with well miso which is a fermented soybean paste soy sauce rice vinegar sugar and some toasted sesame oil we're gonna mix that up real good and now brush it over our eggplant make sure it gets into all the little eggplant crevices for maximum flavor i just realized i said crevices twice in the past minute I don't know how I feel about that. Now into the oven it goes for 10 minutes or so, maybe 15. The sugar will caramelize, the eggplant will cook to a custardy texture and you will be so happy. When it comes out, you can hit it with some sesame seeds and some green onion so it looks nice. Remember, you also eat with your eyes. I mean, that looks amazing. Oh, mm. Number three is zucchini or uh, courgette. I got no problem with you if you say courgette. We're good on that. So someone said zucchini just tastes boring AF. And to be honest, this is kind of the first and only instance where I agree with you a little bit. I just feel like zucchini is just a thing that's in between a cucumber and an eggplant, but it doesn't commit to either. And it's kind of the worst 
of both worlds. So this is a good exercise for me as well. Maybe I can change my own mind. I don't know why I'm holding it like this, like a weapon. So I wanted to do something a little different with zucchini. The idea was pretty basic. I've seen it done before. I wanted to make zucchini fries because I like fries. So I ain't gonna lie. After chopping these guys into size of fries, I tried to disguise them using a batter. I had a bowl of eggs and a bowl of breadcrumbs with mixed in seasonings and grated Parmesan cheese. I coated my zucchini thoroughly with this mixture, although it didn't really stick properly, but yeah, hopes were pretty high. I put this in the oven for about 25 minutes and the result was, yeah, a little disappointing. These don't look the best, but let's see how they taste. I'm not the biggest fan. I have to say not everything that I do always works out. And this is one of those instances where I don't think this is worth it. Zucchini for me still is yet to be improved. But what about this next one? And the second most hated ve- Oh, wait, <laughs> it's not this. And the second most hated vegetable according to you is beetroot. Two separate people back to back, they said this, beetroot, it tastes like dirt. How dare you insult insult this wonderful vegetable. I am determined to prove all beetroot haters wrong. I know there's a bunch of flavor in there. We just gotta unlock it. So I saw this technique in one of Kenji's videos where he makes a little roasting pouch using aluminum foil. So I'm stealing that. I'm adding some olive oil in there, some salt, some rosemary, thyme, and some garlic. Now I'm wrapping that up in some more foil to completely seal it. Now this beet package is gonna go straight in the oven at 190 Celsius for one hour. At the end of which we tested and it just doesn't feel cooked enough. It doesn't give enough when we poke it with the knife. So we give it 20 more minutes. Now they're done. So when they're cool enough to handle or if you have indestructible skin, you will have to go through the task of taking the skin off. Not your skin, the, you know, the the beet skin. And it's easiest to do this under running water, but I didn't feel like moving my camera. So I just did this in a big bowl of water and it worked. Now I'm gonna slice my beets into big boy slices. And the idea here is that we wanna fry them in a pan for just a couple minutes per side. So they get some extra crispiness and some color, just like this. After that, I slice them into slightly smaller pieces because we're gonna make kind of a salad here. I'm adding some complimentary flavors that are gonna make my beets a superstar. They're even gonna make Dwight Schrute proud, trust me. Funny office joke. People can relate to me, therefore that joke is funny. So some feta cheese, chopped up walnuts, honey, red wine vinegar, and some chopped dill. We're gonna mix this up until everything is nice and pink. And I will serve this on top of some toast slathered with a slather of yogurt. And that is definitely the prettiest thing I made today. So I'm pretty happy about it. I generally don't make things that look pretty, but this looks pretty pretty to me. There's so much flavor in the beetroot. It's got an earthy sweetness that is just amplified by all the things we put in it. Okay, and finally, we have reached the tip of the top of vegetable hateness. This is the number one most hated vegetable according to you, Brussels sprouts. So a lot of people hate Brussels sprouts. This person said Brussels sprouts taste like farts. Nah, I disagree with that. Maybe they smell like farts as they're cooking, but they don't taste like farts. They taste good. And then this other person said they're still traumatized from when they were forced to eat them as a kid. Well, today, let me be your Brussels sprout therapist. Now, I'm gonna be honest and tell you that I got this recipe from YouTube. A million people have done it, but it's so good that I genuinely think it's gonna make you appreciate Brussels sprouts more. I like to take off that bottom core of the sprout and then chop it in half and just dump all of them in a bowl. Now, everything we're gonna add here is meant to bring out more flavor and more importantly, improve the texture of these because if we get them crispy and chewy on the inside, the texture alone is enough to love them. So, some olive oil, a generous amount of salt. Don't be salt shy, please. Some creamy balsamic, some honey again, and some freshly cracked black pepper. Stir that up with your good old hand and dump them on a preheated and slightly oiled up baking tray. Now it's important to give them a nice spread and also make them face down. That way the surface area is maximized and we're gonna get some brown crispiness at the bottom. So after 30 minutes in the oven at 190 Celsius, they look like this. I mean, look at that perfect caramelization. And when you bite into to it, it just feels like an entire journey of a bite. Trust me, you have to try this. There's such deep flavors in there. 
but you can also upgrade it with some yogurt. That's beautiful. Brussels sprouts. Mm. Who knew Brussels sprouts can be this? But what if you wanted to make a website about Brussels sprouts. <laughs> well, today's sponsor Squarespace has all the answers. Squarespace is a platform where you can make your own website with zero coding experience. These days it's pretty important, I would say, to have a website. Maybe you wanna show what you're about, your work, your portfolio, or maybe you wanna sell your own products or even make a blog about Brussels sprouts. Either way, Squarespace has hundreds and hundreds of award-winning website templates that you can take and make them your own. You can customize them. They essentially give you anything you need to run a successful website, amazing e-commerce tools. They even have this new membership feature where you can create extra revenue from gated members only content. So I'll tell you what, you go to squarespace.com right now and make the website of your dreams. It's completely free to try. And when you're ready to launch your amazing creation, you can go to squarespace.com slash Quok, K-W-O-O-W-K, that's my channel name, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for supporting the channel. Anyways, guys, let me know if you like this video and you want me to make more of these, like, videos about foods that you dislike. Also, click on one of these two videos if you want to continue watching my, my face right here in video form. And thank you for subscribing and commenting below and sharing this video with your friends and family. And, and that's it. <laughs> Bye.